Amen. It's time to share the word of God. This morning, our word is titled, In the Sight of God. In the Sight of God. Our memory verse, or the main text, is from Mark chapter 8, verse 30 to 33. But we are not going to start from there. We will start from Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Please, can someone help us to read Genesis chapter 6, verse 5? And God saw that the wickedness of men was great in their heads, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Go. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the head, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the head, both men and beasts, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the hair. For it repented me that I have made them. Go. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was just was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Amen. So we are going to use this text to understand the main theme. Amen. Shall we bow down our heads? I want you to begin to thank God for today. Praise the name of the living God for making today a special day for you and I. It is His will that today you come and hear this word. Pray that the Lord will manifest himself this morning. That every word that will come from this pulpit will bless your life. Will lift up a burden upon your head. Will break yokes on your head. Will put a life in your heart. Lord, 
May the Lord speak to your heart. May the Lord prepare your heart for this message. A life-changing word. May the Lord manifest himself to you this morning. of the Lord or in the sight of God. In the scriptures, we have something we call anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism. It means the use of human characters to explain or understand God. Anthropomorphism using human characters to explain God, human attributes to explain or understand God. And this anthropomorphism is used widely in scriptures. You will read scriptures and you will see some parts which says the ears of the Lord it's not blocked or the Lord is not deaf that he cannot hear your prayer. The hand of God is not short that he will save you. God necessarily do not have to stretch his hand to save someone. God does not need to turn his ears to you to hear you. But it is a way for us humans to understand God and understand the ways of God. So, it is a way of bringing the word in human terms to make the scriptures very simple for us to assimilate or understand. Amen. When we read Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, he says that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. Again, he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man who have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. 
but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So now we understand that the Lord turns his eyes to see Noah. So the eyes of the Lord here is being used for us to understand that Noah came into the attention of God. God had attention for Noah in the midst of cruelty of man, in the midst of wickedness of man. There was a man that attracted the Lord. Amen. So Noah finding grace in the sight of God is Noah gaining the attention of God. So in scriptures, wherever we see in the eyes of God is where the grace of God lies. Amen. Where the eyes of God is, is where the grace of God is. So we understand that the grace of God is not everywhere. It is not everywhere that the grace of God is. But the grace of God is where his sight is. Amen. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4. I'm trying to build up what the Lord have for us. First Peter chapter 3 verse 4. Rather, and, mm -hmm. let it be the hidden person of the heart mm -hmm. with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit mm -hmm. which is very precious in the sight of God. So here too, we see in the sight of God. My sister, can you repeat it for us? Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the Wait. Go slow for me, sister. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart. The hidden person of the heart. Go on. With the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Go on. Which is very precious in the sight of God. Go on. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves mm -hmm. being submissive to their own husbands mm -hmm. as sarah obeyed abraham mm -hmm. calling him lord whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror sister stay there which version are you reading nkjv can you read king james kjv but let it be the hidden man of the heart Mm -hmm. In that which is not corruptible, mm -hmm. even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Wait. In the ornament of what? Of a meek and quiet spirit. Of the meek and quiet spirit. We know ornament as we wear, right? We wear ornament. This passage is mainly for women, but I'm just trying to use this to explain to us to wear and it talks about the man of the heart the inner man of the heart and we talked about this in our holy spirit um bible study that your heart is your inner man right and the bible mostly used the heart as a way where all issues of life that's what comes from so the bible says that with a meek spirit so the heart which is pure and with meekness is of a great price to god now god created so many things but could we believe that there are certain things which is of value of great price to god mm -hmm. 
God sees things from the heart, but not from the external. Amen. God sees things from the heart, but not from the external. So your outward appearance is not what God is looking for, but your what? Your inner one. Revelation chapter 3 verse 13. So our heart is of great price or of great value to God. Revelation 3.13 He that hath and hear, let him hear what the Spirit said okay. unto the churches. Go on. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodicean writes, Distance here the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou seest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Amen. So here, the, the Lord was talking to the church. And he was talking about what the church sees themselves and what him, the Lord, sees the church. He says, because you say, I am rich, have become worldly, and have need of nothing. So that is in the sight of men. The church sees themselves as a church who do not need anything. As a church which is worldly. But the Bible says that what the Lord sees is that he said, and do not know that you are wretched. So the church sees themselves as beautiful, as well dressed. But what the Lord sees is their wretchedness. Miserable poor, blind, and naked. So just let's ask ourselves, how can a worthy person be naked? There is no way a worthy person can be naked. But this is what the Lord sees. In the sight of God, the church is miserable, wretched, and naked. That's why the Bible says that your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. Don't let us be deceived by what men say about us. That is not of any importance. The biggest question is how does God see me? The church sees itself as a worldly church. A church who lacked nothing. A beautiful church. But in the sight of God, this church is very miserable, wretched, and naked. A vulnerable church. And he says that I counsel you to buy from the gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garment and that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness might not be revealed and anoint your eyes with your eyes salve and that you may see as many as I love 
So here the Lord is telling them how to reverse that. So the counsel that the Lord gave to them is to buy from the gold refined in the fire. The gold is your heart. That's why David said, create in me a new heart. When I was reading this, that is when I got to know and understand so many of the things that David said. Many of the things that David did or said in scriptures, the only thing we could know is that David was somebody who was adulterous, like light women. But David's prayer was always about the Lord refining his heart. Look at the way he puts his words in Psalm 51. He says, he says like, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. David did not talk about his riches. Did not talk about his wealth. Did not talk about the property because he was a king. He has privilege to everything. But he said, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So it means that God could take anything from him, but for only his spirit. He's pleading God not to touch it. The Lord saying that buy a refined gold. The Lord is comparing your heart. It's liking your heart to a gold. So that means as gold is as precious to us, so as our heart is precious to God. He's telling the church to refine their heart. After refining the heart, he says that that is when I, the Lord, may see you as rich and white garment. That you may be clothed. So that's the reverse of the nakedness. Having the white garment is the referred of the wretchedness. And now you can see is a referred of being blind. Hallelujah. How does the Lord see you? You see me as a very nice gentleman. I don't know if you can confirm it. But what does God see me? Many of us are very particular about what men will say about us. In all our daily lives, we are just struggling to please men. That's all our aim. But in our privacy, what does God see us? First Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. First Samuel 16 verse 7. In the face of God, in the sight of God. In Ghana, we say there is no looking face face. And you shouldn't be anyone. How do we say it in English? I don't know how to put it. In the face of God. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Some local languages are hard to be translated. I will try. I will try. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. I will try. I will, when I get the word, I will let us know. But the Lord said unto Samuel, mm -hmm. Look not on his countenance mm -hmm. or on the height of his stature, mm -hmm. because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Now, we understand that 
Samuel was, if not the greatest prophet on the land of Israel, is one of the greatest. Even the whole Bible, his prophecies are accurate. He was the one who ends two kings in the land of Israel. So, Samuel had experience when it comes to prophecies. Samuel had experience when it comes to like knowing things which that, that suits God. Because if you are a man of God and someone like always God speaks to you, you there are certain things you could know that this is biblical. This is not biblical. I just want us to understand the pedigree of Samuel. But when God sent Samuel to the house of Jesse, the Bible says that when the children were lined up, when Samuel set eyes on Eliab, the first child of Jesse, Samuel said, oh, this is the guy. Your appearance suits a king. Tall man, handsome man. You have everything. Come and let me anoint you. That is what man sees. That is what the prophet saw. A great prophet. Someone the Lord has sent to anoint a king in Jesse's house. upon all the revelations he had he was looking at the outward appearance and the bible says that hey samuel this is not the man for you are looking at the outward appearance but for me i look at the heart And the Bible says that I have refused him. Now, let's take a break. There's a difference between this is not the one and I have refused this. So it means that at a point, Eliab was a consideration for the kingship. Who has the Lord refused? When I read this, that's when I saw that no wonder that even at the vulnerability of David, no matter how David was falling on the face of God, David was walking outside the corridors of God. Yet still, God loved David because God knew the heart of David. God knew the heart of David. If David was in our time, that David went to take somebody's wife we would have crucified David but God wasn't looking at those things God was looking at the man's heart because day in and day out that man is striving to refine his heart to be upright before God that is why when Nathan rebuked him immediately he wrote Psalm 50, 51 In the eyes of God, there is no favoritism. There is no favoritism in the eyes of God. God sees you as you are, as it is. You can deceive yourself. You can tell people a lot about yourself. How you pray in your privacy. How you worship God. How long... You have been in a church. How long you have been part of a certain denomination. But when it comes to the sight of God, how do you look before the Lord? Always I say, I want to go before the Lord naked and not ashamed. 
go day in and day out, if you go before the Lord naked but ashamed, you will never be refined. You go before the Lord and conceive your vulnerability, you will never be refined. David was always going before the Lord with his vulnerability. How vulnerable he is. I pray the Lord help us. Never trust yourself. That for me, this thing, I will, Allah, I will never do it. I will never. takes the grace of God. Never trust yourself. Everyone has the potential of doing anything. Just that the reality has not done on you. I would say that most of Christians in church are just afraid to approach a voodoo. The day they will gather courage, that is when you will know that they are just in church. They have no reason. Never trust yourself. Mighty chapter 26, verse 74. That is where we had this, our main verse. Mark chapter 8, verse 30 to 33. We know, we know the story, so I will just, because of our time. When Jesus Christ told the disciples, it is time for the Son of Man to depart this world. And Jesus Christ was telling the disciples the atrocities that he would go through. What men would do to him? Peter said, Ah! So far as I am alive, ah, it will never happen. It will never. So far as I am alive, me, Peter, ah, Jesus, forget. No one can ever touch you. But the Bible says, that Christ who knew all men's heart said, Oh, Peter, Peter, Peter. The devil has desired to sift you as a weed. But you know what? I will pray for you. Because Jesus knew that, Peter, you are just bragging. Because the reality has not dawned on you, you are just bragging. You don't know what I'm going, I'm going to go through. You don't know what men will do to me. But because of your faith, I will pray for you. For the sake of the church, I will pray for you. That on that day, if you betray me, you will rise again. The Bible says that, Matthew chapter 26 verse 74, this is where the, the story is. I wonder that the first two were small girls. The first two people who told the soldiers were trying to tell the soldiers that, hey, this is, hey, Peter, he's among, they were all little girls. The first two small girls trying to tell Peter that hey, the way he talks, it seems like this man is part of the disciples. He said, me? This man, I've never seen him before. I don't know him anywhere. I thought for the second time, Peter would have come to his consciousness and then understand that he has promised Christ that he would defend him at all times. On the second time, he said, me, me, this Jew, I don't know him, oh, I'm Italian, I'm from Italy. 
I'm from Italy. I don't know him anywhere. Peter betrayed Jesus. Don't be like Peter. That is why so many times when I see Christians bashing other Christians when they sin, go into certain temptations and they make fun of them. Instead of you praying for the man, you just make, you join the world and make fun of your fellow Christian. Even the social media is worse. You will see people, ah, me, this will never happen to me in my lifetime. Never, never. I can never. It's a lie. If you face the same situation, you do 10 times. You do 10 times. Never judge your fellow Christian. When you see anyone go into certain situations, what you have to do is to pray for the person. That prayer that you pray for the person is an investment in your own life that that thing will never happen to you. It comes back as an investment upon your life. That prayer that you said for that person, that when it comes to that temptation, the Lord will deliver you. That's why the Lord's prayer, Jesus Christ said, for lead us not into temptation. But even when we fall into those temptations, we fall into those evils, Lord, deliver us. So that means that there are some people who will fall into those temptations. Yet the Lord will deliver us. How does the Lord see you? As well dressed as you are this morning. I will never see you in any way that will look awkward in the eyes of God. But since the Lord knows your heart, He knows everything. Whatever that I'm thinking of you, oh, this brother, he is cool, he is nice. Is that how the Lord sees you? Is that how the Lord sees you? Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 to 10. He says that above all things, the heart of man is desperately wicked. And the line word is above all things. Scriptures do not lie. Above all things, the heart of man is desperately wicked. And it's added that, who can know? So it means that we don't have the device, we don't have the software to detect what is in the heart of man. It's only God. And he added that, it is me, the Lord, who can search our heart. Be careful when you are criticizing people. Be very careful how the way you treat people. When I was preparing for this message and I got to realize that there are so many things that we pray for and we never get results and I had the reason because of our heart you can see that you can intercede for someone for a very long time but there will be no difference the person will never receive the thing because of the heart if your heart is not prepared for what you are asking from God God will never answer you God is not looking at your tears God is not looking at how long you fast the Lord is looking at your heart. That is where the sight of God lies. So if you are praying for something and then you are not receiving it, instead of you 
to focus on the thing that you want to receive focus on your heart so many of us pray for encounter but our heart are full of iniquities we have not placed our heart in a condition we have not created a condition to which we can sustain that encounter God invest in a place where he will get to return. That is how God is. He invests in where he will get to return. That is why he used the sword seed sower. He used a man that gave his servant talent. And the Bible says that the one who hid the talent was seen as a bad person was seen as a worst servant because God invests in where he will get good returns what's your heart before the Lord what's your heart before the Lord when you read Matthew chapter 5 he says one of the he says blessed are those pure in heart blessed are those who are pure in heart for the what the what so the sight of God is in your heart God is looking at your heart Your appearance does not catch the attention of God. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 31. I think I have to. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 31. faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace now in Hebrew chapter 11 Paul was telling a story about people in the Old Testament who had faith he gave Moses four verses he gave Samuel Abraham he was talking about a whole lot of people but I, I was asking myself, how could this woman come here? Rahab, if we know the story of Rahab, Rahab was a prostitute. That when the people of Israel wanted to enter Jericho, because he, she was an international prostitute, she wasn't like a local one, she was international. People from other nations come and then do whatever they want to do. An international one. A well-renowned one. And because of that, he was just living at the walls, at the exterior portion, at the gate, so that when the international people come, they just, then they are there. Easy. They don't, they don't have to walk into the inner cities. She's just at the gate. So the moment they come, they can quickly and quickly leave. But this woman was added. They gave this woman a scripture. In the eyes of men, how could this prostitute have a faith? His faith was to see that this man. Let's read Joshua chapter 2. That is where this story is. Joshua chapter 2. Because of our time, I will just describe this story. When the Israelites, the five spies, went there, he, he just started telling them. He said, I've heard how the Lord parted the seas for you guys to pass through. I've heard how the Lord has used you guys 
to fight against so many nations on your way to this place. I can never afford to lose my life. Therefore, let me hide you in my place. That is faith. Because the people of Israel, their testimonies went ahead of them. May your testimony move ahead of you. Her faith was just to receive the people of God. Hide them. So that the purpose of God will manifest. That was her faith. How does this woman be counted as a faithful person? And this woman is the grandmother of Jesus Christ. Hiya. Grandmother of Jesus, so the most holiest person. In my human lens, how could this woman even appear in scriptures? How could an international prostitute appear in scriptures? He, she never deserved it. But this woman is the grandfather of the Lord. When Lord wanted to manifest himself in the flesh, this woman is part of the genealogy of Jesus. Don't belittle anyone. Amen. Let's try to look through the lenses of the word of God and the lens of the spirit. You will see that there were so many things that happened in scriptures. You will sit down and you will never understand. You see that when somebody kills somebody it's a crime right but we've seen in scriptures that israelites killed both pregnant children the bible says that david went into a city the lord instructed that they should wipe away all the people in the city and they should not take even any property is this not wickedness morally we will say it's wickedness but so far as the lord has said it so far as it is the Lord who commanded it, it is righteous in the sight of God. So far as the Lord has commanded it, it's righteous in the sight of God. Be careful when someone is doing something and you start criticizing without understanding. without understanding that is why so many times i do not like like being just criticizing pastors if they do something it's not biblical you can say this one is not biblical but you cannot say this man is not from god when god was calling him i wasn't there if you say this thing he's doing it's not from god like it's not biblical you are right be careful if you don't understand if you understand and you can see you are right to say it if the person is from god or not but the bible says that we should test all spirits right but if you don't have that kind of eyes please keep it to yourself other than that you will criticize a pastor who is from god and the spirit of god will judge you because you have spoken against the holy spirit In the eyes of God. In the sight of God. Amen. How does the Lord see you? What's the condition of your heart? The Lord is using your heart as a lens to see your inner man. When Adam sinned, the Bible says that God was roaming in the Garden of Eden and he called Adam, where are you? How can God ask Adam where he is? Because we know that God is omnipresent. Because Abraham, Adam was 
on a certain seat in the realms of the spirit. The moment he sinned, he left that seat. So God was trying to see Adam through that seat in the realms of the spirit. But because of Adam's sin, Adam has become a carnal man. And God does not see a carnal man. The eyes of God is not on a carnal man. That's why when we read when we read John 3, he says, For God so loved the world. So God loved the world and Christ died for the whole world. But the Holy Spirit is not for the whole world. The Holy Spirit for holy people. Those who are called by the Lord. So the moment you receive Christ, you are called by the Lord. Amen. Shall we bow down our heads? Our time is passing. I want you to examine yourself. As we have got to know that the grace of God is where is at where the sight of God is. And the sight of God is at your heart. As man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at your inward man, the inner man. I want you to pray. As the book of Revelation said, as the Lord told the church, that refine your gold, refine your heart. I want you to pray to God. As David said, create in me a new heart. We need some refurbishment. We need some renovation of our heart. We need some cleansing of our heart. I want you to talk to God at this point. Father, refine my heart. Create in me a new heart. Create in me a new heart. Refine me, refine me, refine me. also a prayer. Restore unto me the I want you to continue to pray. We don't want our heart to be full of wickedness. We don't want a deceitful heart. Cast me not away from, from thy presence, O Lord. We don't want to be self-righteousness. Take, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me. Joy of thy salvation and renew your spirit within me and renew your spirit 
we need.